When you look around the world, and this is uh, the theme of the, the book that I wrote and published in 2011 called The Stark Solution, what you'll find is all large successful populations of people throughout all of verifiable human history have obtained the bulk of their calories from starch. As I told you, the Chinese before 1980, nobody was obese. Fewer than 1% of the population had type 2 diabetes. 90% of their diet came from rice. It's because they gave up the rice that they're fat and sick today. So you have the Asians living on rice, you have the Mayans and the Aztecs in Central America living on corn, you have the Incas in South America living on potatoes. Every time you turn on the news in the evening, you see stories about Egypt and Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan. That part of the world is known as the breadbasket of the world. These people for thousands of years lived on bread as people have in Western Europe. But all of a sudden, bread is evil. Starch makes you fat. How'd that happen? Now, I, I could go back over those pictures I showed you of the beef and the chicken and the fish and the, and the butter and so on. Just remember the images that went through your mind. Those are the things you have to give up, the yellow and the brown food that tastes of grease, well, then it tastes of salt and sugar because they're high, trying to hide up the hide the disgusting or bland taste. What you have to do is you have to substitute those food poisons for these foods. See how you react to these pictures. This is how you solve food poisoning. We served these yesterday morning before the folks went home from their Whole Foods immersion program. They loved the pancakes. This even went over well in India. I, I tell people when they come to the program, either they come to the 10-day program or they come to the immersion program, the first night we serve pea soup, which is made of peas and, uh, and potatoes and carrots and various kinds of vegetables. And I tell them, I ask them, do they like the pea soup? And they say, oh yeah, we love the pea soup. And I tell them, you, you can go home after the program and you can live on pea soup and water for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next 18 years. You'll be in phenomenal health. You don't have to make a big deal out of this. You can make up a dish like this and eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner 14 times a day, seven days a week. Just live on these kinds of foods. They have everything you need in them. I'm sure you find this attractive. Oh, mashed potatoes. My mother, she'd make this great mashed potatoes with peas and corn. she put a brown gravy over the top. I know, the ground gravy wasn't made healthy then, but it is now. And it's still one of my favorite dishes. I could live on mashed potatoes and peas and corn and brown gravy three times a day. Uh, sweet potato. You can live on sweet potatoes and water. You can live on potatoes and water. You don't need anything else. Potatoes are known as the anti-scurvy vegetable. People have, by the millions, lived on potatoes and water alone. That's all they had. It supplied all the protein, all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the calcium. Everything they needed came from potatoes. In South America, millions of people, that's all they had. In uh, Poland and Russia, 114 years ago, that's all they had. Post-World War II Germany, that's all they had. Fortunately, that's all you need. All the nutrients you need, all the nutrients you require, you can get from sweet potatoes and water alone, or potatoes and water alone. Now you can't do that with seeds. You can't live on a grain like rice or rye or barley or wheat or legumes like beans, peas, and lentils and water alone. You can't do it. The reason is is because they're deficient in vitamin A and C. So to live on a diet of rice you would have to add a uh, slice of orange a day or a flowerette of broccoli a day to get your A and C. Otherwise, you could live on rice. 